Hello! Welcome to my channel, I'm Jason White. This is Jason's Weird Reads, and this is uh, From the Hip number 4. And if you're unfamiliar with my uh, From the Hip series, it's just basically where I, uh, where I rant about things here and there, and, you know, praise things as well. Uh, so, cheers. Very loose discussion type based, and, you know, I got the idea to do this video this type of video from watching uh, uh, Charles Heathcote and his wool gathering videos. Um, watching those videos reminded me a lot of uh, some of the podcasts I used to listen to. And one of them was called Horror Etc. I absolutely loved this, <laughs> this podcast. It is responsible for me wanting to create my own podcasts. And uh, there's another really good one. Dread Media. That's been going on since like 2010. He's that guy has done like uh, uh, well over 600 uh, episodes. I I was on the 666 because of course Desmond uh, from that podcast. He <laughs> you know when when he reached 666 episodes, he had to make a you know a devil themed episode. And uh, so he asked me to be on it because I had been a previous guest when I was talking about my novel, The Haunted Country, on his show. And I forget what episode that one was. was uh, 400 and something or 500 and something. I don't know. Anyway, um, so listening to Horror Etc., uh, they, they would have a From the Hip uh, section in their podcast. I don't think this podcast is available anymore because they stopped a little while ago. And I think they stopped, you know, the whatever service they were using to uh, store the episodes. So, uh, so the you know iTunes Store will no longer have them, and you can't find them anywhere. But that's a shame because they they did some incredible work, and uh, it actually depressed me when they decided to call it a day. I mean, I got really depressed. It felt like I made friends with these guys, you know, and uh, and for them just to say, all right, and uh, we're done. I wasn't alone. You know, I didn't get angry like some people did. They got, like, I think death threats or something. It was, uh, it was ridiculous. But I did get very depressed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm over it now, obviously. But all that stuff stuck with me, and that's, that's why you get from the hips from me now. And, uh, uh, before I get into anything else, I just want to mention these. Uh, I think, uh, you know, just shooting the shit about stuff um this is a great place for that uh so if you're into horror magazines at all um you might not have heard of these ones this one's brand new and it's by uh undertow press i think it's press publications undertow publications i uh i, I bought this recently from them and uh this is weird horror um uh, issue number one and when I bought this you weren't able to uh, subscribe to the magazine but I think they've since changed that um, as I said this is uh, the first issue and uh, when I bought it um, I was also sent along this awesome bookmark it's a great bookmark because uh, it, it's perfect for magazines like this that are kind of big and thick instead of having like a tiny bookmark <laughs> you can like just this one makes more sense, right? I mean, you wouldn't want to use this for a, a pocketbook at all. It's just way too big, but it fits perfectly for this. And uh, I haven't read it yet, though. Uh, I really got to get a move on that. I am horrible for reading these books or these magazines that I buy. Um, but I'm going to make a point of that maybe uh, uh, within the next two weeks because I am now uh, switching from day shift to night shift at my job. And sometimes you have a little bit more free time to to sit down and read a, sh a short story or two at work. So let's get into the authors here. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not familiar with too many of them. But that's okay, because this is, you know, reading short... Uh, reading magazines of uh, short stories like this is a great way same with anthologies it's a great way to you know find new authors uh john langan has a story in here which is really awesome and uh 
That's the only one I recognize, actually, I think. No, nope, Simon... Oh, that's non-fiction, though. Uh, Simon Strances has a piece in here, but that's, as I just said, um, non-fiction. I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe it's uh, him telling you how to pronounce certain words. Uh, that's an opinion piece, so maybe, huh? All right, so yeah, definitely a, a weird horror by Undertow Publications. I'm a pretty big fan of Undertow, as it is. Uh, they they publish really elegant looking weird fiction and uh, they do a marvelous job at, at printing their books let me tell you Michael Kelly he runs this uh, uh, publication and uh, I don't know if he's he used to do um, his undertow publications used to do the uh, world's best weird fiction and I was really rather upset that they decided to stop doing that because uh, because that was an awesome series, but maybe he stopped to do this. I don't know, but yeah. So this looks very promising. Looking very much looking forward to reading that. And also recently, I subscribed to uh, Black Static Magazine. This is the third issue I've got from that subscription. These guys have been around for a very long time, uh, at least 10, 15 years. This is issue 77, and this one here is like is. It has two of my favorite short story writers in here, and that's Steve Rasnick Tem and Philip Fercassi. Um, they're both very well known in the weird, weird horror, weird fiction realms. There's also stories in here by uh, Shannon K. Garrity, David Martin, Francois Harvey, and Eric Shaler. And there's also a very interesting piece here at the beginning. Um, by Linda E. Rucker, who who writes uh, a segment, or at least a, an opinion piece in each of these magazines, and uh, hers is uh, Ghost Stories for Christmas, where she goes into a little bit of the history of the European history of reading ghost stories on Christmas Eve, and it's really I think it's really sad that we've stopped doing that. I mean, Christmas, it makes sense why. Christmas would have ghost stories in it if you want to go back to uh, traditional uh, reasons why we celebrate Christmas not not necessarily the Christian reason uh, is that it's the uh, it's the longest night of the year and uh, and this is the time where the Sun starts to come back and so you're basically at the beginning of winter and that right there is death I don't know why I, I said death with coffee, but this is my third video. I've been doing this for a while now, today, and I'm kind of tired, so bear with me. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely read these uh, magazines. They're awesome. Um, I also want to mention uh, I did a I did a piece or a uh, I did a video recently regarding, uh, well, it was a tag video. Uh, what was it called? The Spooky Tag. So it was the Spooky Scary book tag. I was a little surprised at the, uh, the reaction I got. One of the questions was, how are you going to slog through 2021? My answer to that was, uh, I'm not going to make any promises to myself or, or count on 2021 being any better because there seems to be a progression going on here where it's just going from bad to worse to worse to worse. And 2020 seemed to be the apex of this. And I don't know if it's going to get worse next year or not. But a lot of people seem to be uh, affected by my answer in regards to that. And honestly, you know... Um, uh, one of my answers in response to this was I, I don't I don't think people understand how uh, how hope can harm people because hope when you're hoping for something I was thinking about this when I tend to hope for things suddenly that hope becomes no longer hope it's uh, it's the idea that this is going to happen you know and so when it doesn't happen in fact when the opposite happens it's crushing. And so I've learned to not hope so much for, uh, I guess, good things because something bad is, it's always out there. You're never going to have, you're going to have periods of time 
where things are great. But you're also going to have periods of time where things are bad. And you have no control over that. Uh, you can do what you can to control it, but you, the bad's going to come regardless. So it's important to remember that because then you're not so upset. Some people need to rely on hope. And that's fine. I'm just not one of those people. So I don't want to. I don't want to be the guy pissing all over your your hope parade. <laughs> but uh, it's just how I deal with uh, you know bad things coming, because bad things are going to come, whether or not I want them to. But it was still interesting. Just just looking, you know, at the responses I got for that video. It, it was interesting seeing that this really affected people. And I think, you know, the culmination of everything that's gone on from 2015 or 16 onwards to now, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. I mean, you could say you've lived through some really interesting times. And so I think people having survived that, they know what I'm talking about when I say that it's every year just seemed to get worse and worse and worse. And so how can we say that 2021 is going to be any better because it might not. There's a lot of people who don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> They're like, it has to be better, okay? And uh, I get that. I want it to be better, too. I desperately want it to be better. I want to go back to when it was 2014, and we didn't have to hear such crazy bullshit happening in the news every day by crazy, insane people who just have no regard for other people other than themselves. And it's just... Ugh, you know, you just get so tired of it. So, <laughs> I'm, so I'm going insane. All right. So, I've been reading lately, as, you know, usual. But, you know, I'm going through something kind of weird. Um, I, As I've mentioned before, I am a part of uh, the Shades of Orange Patreon group on Discord. And, uh, and... For December, we're going to be reading um, we're going to be reading Ghost Story by Peter Strop, and uh, I started early because I find that uh, the guys there uh, they read things really quickly, <laughs> so I wanted to jumpstart on that. And I started Ghost Story, and I am not liking it. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It, it's like a couple of rich people privileged rich people sitting in a circle drinking whiskey talking about the worst thing that happened to them or what's the worst thing they did and you know I think I might have liked this book five years ago a lot more than now but I don't know why I'm not liking it it's not that it's bad it's not bad by any means I think I'm just not in the mood for it to be honest with you um I don't know what to do though do I do I continue reading it um it could also, because I'm listening to it on audiobook, the narrator, I, I find, he, it's like they recorded this narration back in the 90s, because the narrator has sort of an old, older style of narrating books, um, and uh, I don't really like his narration. It's easy to pay attention to, it's just, it kind of grinds my nerves, so maybe I just need to read it with my eyes, and I'm thinking of a... Uh, thinking of switching because I have it on my Kindle as well so I was thinking of switching it uh, and listening or actually reading it and just not bothering with the audiobook uh, that might make <laughs> a world of difference because I find that the narrator honestly the narrator really influences the way you're going to enjoy a book because they often inject their own voices to the characters and that will become the voice of the character like, when I read the Wheel of Time books, I listened to the majority of that on audiobooks, and the characters all took a life of their own because of the narrators. Uh, the narrators really had a voice for each, a different voice for each character, and it was just brilliantly done. And the narrator for this book, he's like I said, he's not bad, it's just, it's just not working for me. And uh, a lot of it's due to his uh, character voices, because he, he, especially, you know, when he does women voices, it's just, no. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, he, there's the, this really smart character in there, and whenever he, he talks in that character's voice, he makes him sound stupid. And 
it, it just it's not working so I, I think I have to switch to the ebook but that means it might take me a lot longer to read it so there's that I also want to start reading Krampus by Brahm soon I have listened to that on audiobook I have it on loaded on my scribd account and this one is awesomely awesomely uh, narrated in fact you can speed this one up to 1.5 times speed and it sounds pretty much like me talking right now <laughs> uh, so I can really burn through this one really quickly I'm looking I'm looking forward to listening to that uh, as of right now, I am listening, or sorry, reading uh, on my Kindle. Here, I'll pull it up on my phone. Knight of the Mannequin. Now, this <laughs> this book is, uh, you know, despite the uh, despite the title, I I wasn't I wasn't sure on what to expect, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's the title pretty much has exactly what it's about and uh, of course this is by Stephen Graham Jones and I don't think you're supposed to take this book uh, seriously at all it, it the it's first person narrative and uh, the the narrator he has very much the language of a teenager and so sometimes it's kind of hard to read I find and it's not because the the story is dense it's because the character's thoughts kind of bounces all over the place sometimes but other than that this is a lot of fun and I'm o I'm only about 30 percent in it's very short books like 150 pages but I I'm really enjoying it this is I think my third Stephen Graham Jones of this year and uh, so this is like the year of Stephen Graham Jones <laughs> so I, I highly recommend reading this if you haven't read it and uh, I'm looking forward to finishing it and letting everyone know what I thought of it and uh, I think that's all I wanted to talk about for this episode I think I've rambled on long enough so thank you for watching um, uh, please let me know in the comments what you're reading right now and, uh, and please uh, keep being safe keep being kind to each other and keep being creative, and I'll catch you guys in the next bookish video.